Welcome to episode two of Fun With Film. Today I'm going to talk briefly, got to be brief because the light keeps changing in here, it's really weird, uh, about anti-halation layers, film structure, anti-halation layers with particular reference to Remjet. Remember the Remjet. Read between the lines. You can't read between the lines. There aren't any lines to read. L listen between the words if you prefer uh, and you'll understand why, particularly with reference to the end of the last programme. Film is very simple. Uh, it, there's a base. There's a sort of plastic base which traditionally, well no actually not traditionally, tends to be cellulose acetate these days or increasingly uh, a polyester base. Uh, it used to be cellulose nitrate. So early acetate films had on the rebate, on the edge of the film where the numbers go, it would say safety film. Now that's because cellulose nitrate is, is the chemical name of gun cotton and an awful lot of cinemas around the turn of the last century, a um, yeah, hundred years ago. Cinema fires were quite popular because you were pulling an explosive through a projector with a carbon arc. Yeah, bang, great fun. Anyway, uh, part of the, the, the photographic process uh, or part of this is, is an anti halination layer. You'd have the plastic base, now have the plastic base. On top of that is a light sensitive emulsion. It's not quite as simple as that, but basically light sensitive emulsion. And you need an anti halination layer, halation layer because the light comes through the emulsion. It's only microns thick, through the base of the film, which is fractions of a millimeter, and bounces off the back. And it causes highlights around, well, it causes halos around all the highlights. It looks really quite nice. It's very typical of infrared film. And the light's gone. But we'll carry on. Uh, to stop that, we have a, uh, this thing called the, the anti-halation layer, which is usually on the back of the film. Sometimes it goes between the film and the, the film base and the the emulsion but it's usually it's a coating on the back of the film and it's usually a dye most films now use a dye and in fact you tend not to see it so much on 35 mil but certainly with uh, medium format and large format films it's one of the exciting bits of processing is you pre-soak the film and you, what color is the the, the soak water coming out uh, you, you get green and, and blue are quite common um, i've seen pink and I think it was Agfa, one of the Agfa films used to turn out this beautiful purple dye. But for cine films, you've got to have other properties as well because the film's moving through the camera. It's being yanked through the camera at 24 frames a second. So you need other properties. And they came up with this REM jet, which is REM, removable, jet, jet black. And it's photographic grade soot. Basically, it's, it's carbon. It's photographic grade soot. It's far better than lab grade. And it was made into an emulsion with water soluble glues and sprayed onto the back of the film. Uh, that works as a brilliant anti halation layer because it's, it's matte black, it's almost completely light absorbent. So any light going through the base didn't reflect, it just got absorbed. It also is slightly electrically conductive. So if you're dragging this film through and these hooks through a camera like that at 24 frames a second. It's, it builds up static and the carbon would disperse the static so there's no sparks. <laughs> Which, you know, if you're using cellulose nitrate films, <laughs> last thing you want. But even so, you know, sparks will mark the film because it's, it's light sensitive. Of course it will. It doesn't. It disperses the static and it's carbon. Carbon's a good lubricant. So it keeps it running through the, the camera smoothly. You've then got to get rid of it. Now, there is, I know of one or a range of, um, only one manufacturer making a range of motion picture film at the moment, and that's Kodak and Vision 3. That's the color. They do black and white as well. Black and white, they use a different process. They don't use a, don't use a Remjet, but the Vision 3 still has a Remjet coating. And as we got it, as I got it wrong on the, the last episode, it's, it's ECN3, ECN2, I'm still getting it wrong. ECN2, Eastman Color Negative 2 process, and the machines have a water knife that cuts down the back, removes the Remjet. 
You can get short ends and recans of Vision 3 if you know where to look, and I haven't found any yet. It will process in C41 chemistry, which is what you use in a mini lab, but you can buy a kit. And there are a thousand and one ways to remove the remjet on the internet. Most of them using an alkali solution in the tank with the risk of getting remjet on the emulsion. Anyway, people seem to have huge success doing this. What you don't do when you repot it into your 35mm film pot is then take it down to the one hour photo lab because if they don't realise there's a remjet on it and they put it through their machine, C41 developer is highly alkali. It strips off the remjet and dumps it everywhere inside the machine. So you end up with a machine that is now has to be taken out of service, has to be drained down, scrubbed the most intimately, refilled, oops, still contamination, washed out again and refilled. The machine's going to be out of action for days, not hours. Uh, there's going to be a huge wastage of chemistry. And if you did that intentionally, you, you know, you, was that, you know, are you criminally liable for that? Was, is that criminal damage? That's why you need to be careful if you're going to go weird, which I hope we are at some point. We're going to go weird and we're going to, we're going to hopefully get hold of some Vision 3. You can buy it. It's called Cine Still. It's £8 a roll. Uh, and that's Vision 3 that's had the Remjet pre-removed and comes ready packaged in a, in a 35mm cassette. And because it's already in a 35mm cassette and it's had the Remjet removed, you can take that down. If it's Cine Still, it can go through the one hour photo lab quite happily there's no problem with that what are we going to do next next we're going to look at the chemistry of making your own rodinol that's going to be fun and then we're going to try and make some if i can get the bits see you again fairly soon <laughs>